Pat Riley has always said that a playoff series truly begins when a team wins on the road. The New York Knicks came to Philadelphia looking to officially get the party started and go up 3-0 for the series. The Philadelphia 76ers' first home game of the 2024 NBA playoffs was the best one they've played thus far, leading them to a 125-114 victory. This featured Joel Embiid setting a new playoff career high in points thanks to his 50-point performance. After going 4 of 17 from 3 over the first two games against New York, the big man from Yaoundé, Cameroon, made 5 of his 7 attempts and cashed in on 19 of his 21 free throws. Strong games from Tyrese Maxey, who had 25, and Kelly Oubre with 15 were the icing and cherry on top for Philadelphia. Now, Jalen Brunson's 39-point performance and consistently strong and timely plays from Ananobi and Hartenstein kept the Knicks around for the entirety of the first half, but Joel Embiid came out with a 19-point third quarter, and that made the statement the Sixers needed. Philadelphia as a team was 9 of 12 from 3 in the third quarter. Jalen Brunson said after the game that he wasn't concerned with his 39-point performance at all because his team lost a game where they gave up 43 points in the third. The Knicks won the fourth quarter 29-27, but fell short by 11 largely because of the utter wrecking ball dominance from Embiid. Mitchell Robinson was unable to go in the second half because of the left ankle injury that had him on the list before the game. And Head coach Tom Thibodeau was confident he'd be good to go, but he seemed to re-aggravate it at some point during the game, and so he was unable to return. This resulted in Precious Achua playing 10 minutes, which was his first burn of the playoffs. Coach Tom Thibodeau addressed reporters after the game and was as explicit as he's ever been about his thoughts on the officiating. When asked about the flagrant foul committed by Embiid, he quickly asked SNY's Ian Begley if he was referring to the one the referees called or the one that they didn't. The one that was called was when Embiid, from the ground, pulled down Mitchell Robinson and shoved him afterwards. Thibodeau clarified the non-call he was referring to was when Embiid hit Hartenstein in the groin following a swim move to get past him. Thibodeau also alluded to Scott Foster's explanation for overturning a call where Lakers guard D'Angelo Russell was hit in the face, granted a foul on the drive, and eventually never attempted the free throws. Foster cited marginal contact as what happened there, and the Knicks head coach said that he'll watch the game through again, send his clips into the league as he usually does, but that they'll respond saying all of the non-calls were marginal contact. Thibodeau added that when the Knicks had marginal contact on Joel Embiid, he ended up at the free throw line 21 times. The majority of the post-game press conference focused on the game's officiating, with Thibodeau even encouraging reporters to ask the referee in a pool report about the flagrant one called on Embiid and why it was not a flagrant two. Getting back to X's and O's in the environment here at the Wells Fargo Center, the Knicks made lots of shots in the first half that kept them around with the surging home team in the Sixers and even had some fans in the crowd making a lot of noise. I mean, MVP chance for Jalen Brunson, let's go Knicks chance, but each time they were drowned out by the Sixers fans present in the building, and the monster third quarter for Philadelphia got them ahead to an extent that proved to be insurmountable for New York. Isaiah Hartenstein, Mitchell Robinson, and Joel Embiid all had three fouls in the first half. Embiid finished with just those three, but Hartenstein finished with five. And as mentioned earlier, Mitchell Robinson didn't return in the second half at all, giving you those Achua minutes. The Knicks play again in Philadelphia Sunday at 1 p.m., where they'll look to truly start the series with a road win. Colin Lochran will have you covered here in the city of brotherly love for WFUV sports. And you can go to our social channels, especially on Twitter, to see all of our live reporting and live tweets from the game. Stay tuned to our coverage here at WFUV. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you Sunday. Check out Colin Lochran's coverage of Game 4.